I'm usually a fan of ground up remakes. You get updated masterpieces from a time when developers were ambitious because budgets weren't massively overblown. Risky ideas were worth a shot, but the only problem is the 90s and early 2000s haven't exactly aged very well. I honestly missed Shadow of the Colossus during its heyday, and by the time the remaster came out, it still didn't look that great. So I skipped it again because AAA games have spoiled me senseless. Anyway, I finally got around to playing it, so here are my thoughts. Shadow of the Colossus starts off with the world's longest horse riding montage. While not my favorite method to starting a game, it does a great job establishing the game's atmosphere. Our main character, Wander, carries a dead girl to an ancient temple in order to bring her back to life. A mysterious being named Dorman says it'll do just that if our white knight kills 16 colossi. And all Wander has at his disposal is a sacred sword, a bow with infinite arrows, and an indestructible horse. So it's not like he's totally under-equipped. But that's it for the premise, and it's pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, not exactly, as there's a lot more happening in this game's narrative than at first glance. Besides not literally letting a thought be gone, Wander is quite a flawed character. While you never learn the specifics of his past, it's safe to deduce it isn't completely noble. After all, general rule of thumb calls to not completely trust anyone carrying a corpse into a forbidden land to dabble in necromancy. Matter of fact, the dude is also beyond short-sighted. Seriously, he just follows this disembodied voice without a second thought, while the game leads the player to constantly question their actions, and make you think, hey, am I being a dick for slaughtering all these creatures just to bring my girlfriend back to life? Throughout my playthrough, I always thought Dorman felt a little impatient whenever he gives hints when you seem to be stuck. Only once I reached the ending did it all make sense, so kudos to Shadow of the Colossus for incorporating the fucking hints into the story. That's attention to detail that I notice, and this game loves its attention to detail. It'll have more obvious things, like your sword being more reflective in the sunlight, all the way down to shooting off lizards' tails without actually killing them. Hell, doing an aerial attack, by far the most useless fucking thing in this game, will even have a different landing animation in the sand as your sword gets stuck. The devs really cared about this game's detail, and it shows. With all that said, Shadow of the Colossus can be one of those games that's a little difficult to finish, at least it was for me. Not because it's challenging or hard, but because it's emotionally taxing. Every time you defeat a Colossus, you hear a melancholy song that can be played over any memorable death in most games. Here's an example. See what I mean? I felt like a total asshole every time I slayed these captivatingly large giants. In many cases, you're the aggressor as you antagonize and eventually kill these majestic beasts. And the game does a fantastic job at telling you that. What adds to the sadism is how the game gives you quiet time to reflect. Before each fight, you'll ride on horseback and soak in the stunning beauty of the nature nearby, which is turned up to 11 with the updated graphics. That's right, you appreciate the world and atmosphere around you before murdering the creatures that inhabit it. It's more than a little cruel, but intentionally distancing the players from the main character in a meaningful way while keeping them hooked is not easy to do. I always describe Shadow of the Colossus as an action-adventure puzzle game. Emphasis on the puzzle. Because the game's combat is pretty slow-paced for a standard action-adventure game, there's always a specific trick to getting to a Colossus' weak point. Once you start a battle, the first thought that goes through your mind is, how the fuck do I get up there? Sometimes that involves using the environment, while others you just exploit its pressure points or something to climb your way up. Once you're clinging onto the Colossus, then you make way to its vitals, and thank god Wander has wrists of steel, and that the Colossus never tries to swat you because that'd be instant game over. Once you're at the glowing magic circle, give it a stab or two and rinse and repeat. Honestly, figuring out this pattern is where the challenge lies, because the Colossus feel incredibly slow. Granted, that's balanced with very generous hitboxes just to remind you that you're basically an insect and over your head, but with that said, they don't do nearly enough damage as they should. Although, maybe I'm not giving enough credit to Wander, this dude can take fall damage like a champ. You know, despite taking dirt naps a little longer than he really should. I mean, I get it. I'd probably be lying on the ground much longer if I was in his shoes, but shake it off. A Colossus isn't going to wait for your ass to get up off the ground. Ironically enough, this made some of the smaller Colossi more threatening to deal with, because this bullshit can happen. 
If you're unlucky, you can get a zero to death just like me. I've fallen, and I can't get up! Shadow of the Colossus is not a long game by any means. You only have 16 fights, so a playthrough might take you just over 5 hours. But looking on the bright side, that's still more than enough time for the most pale girl in the universe to get the worst sunburn of her life on only half her face. Now, actually, there are timed modes to extend the replayability and collectibles, but it's still not exactly a huge time sink. Take that as you will, but I think it works out in the game's favor, as it never feels dragged out, so I had an enjoyable time all the way throughout the short ride. It's still a wonderful game and a completely unique experience that you can't get anywhere else. Shadow of the Colossus gets an A-. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I know it's a little shorter than my normal reviews, but that's probably because I couldn't just roast the story for like four minutes like I do in most of these fucking videos. Um, anyway, I still got some more videos in the works, um, some newer titles this time, uh, and I think you guys will enjoy them. Anyway, feel free to share your thoughts on the video and the game, and later. <laughs>